everyone. Welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy. Today, I'm so excited to be doing a Dollar Tree summertime collaboration with my sweet friend Kat over at According to Cat, and that's Cat with a K. And if you love all things farmhouse and Dollar Tree and trash to treasures, you'll love her channel. And I'll have that listed in the description box below. So after you're done here, Go say hi to her, let her know I sent you. And if you're joining us from her channel, welcome to our little crafting family. And if you like what you see, I hope you'll consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below, as well as the little bell next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. So without further ado, let's get started. For our first project, we're gonna be using one of these tin planters. And then three of these little mermaid tails. I think they're like jewelry holders or something. And then some greenery that kind of looks like seaweed to me of some sort. And then some of the marbles and pebbles, the glass pebbles. And then just some random shells. The bag of shells I got at Dollar Tree and the netting. But I also keep shells when we collect them from the beach. And then some white spray paint. And so all I did was just spray painted my planter and I just gave it a couple of coats. It's a lot easier if you do pretty thin coats and then wait for it to dry and then go back and hit it again. I'm really liking that I have my designated painting station out on the side of my house. It makes it a lot easier and I don't get overspray on the concrete and it's kind of out in the open and there's no fumes to worry about. So now I'm just going to take it inside and I took a Dollar Tree bag and stuffed it at the bottom so I wouldn't have to fill up with as many of the pebbles. And so I just made a layer and then I'm going to get my little mermaid tails ready by taking off the stickers and then setting them where I want them and then putting more rocks in. I wanted to add the pink just for a little bit of color but I wanted more of the white to stand out and so the pink I put in the back but you could do it with whatever colors you want they also had a really pretty aqua one that I did get but I'm just gonna add the pink to this one So now I'm going to take some of that netting and cut a little piece off and I'm going to use that in our final DIY. So I'm just going to cover the wording that still stands out because it's painted over but it still kind of sticks out so you would be able to see it if I didn't put anything over it. So I'm just going to cover that up and tuck it in and use the rocks to keep it in place. And then I'm going to add some of that seaweed to the back. I got that at Hobby Lobby and when I got it, it wasn't meant to be used as seaweed. I just got it for greenery, but my daughter said it looked like seaweed. So we're going to use that in this project. And so here's how it turned out. And I think it's so cute. And this would be a really cute centerpiece if you're doing like a mermaid party. But my granddaughter, Cadence, her room is in mermaids. So this will be going to her house. But I just love the white and the nautical look. And I added some shells at the top as well. But it's so sweet and soft and still neutral even though it's pink. But I think this is a really sweet summertime project. And I hope you guys like it. For our next summertime project, we'll be using two of these Dollar Tree glass vases, some Waverly chalk paint in white, celery, and ballet slipper, my Sharpie oil-based paint pen, four sprigs of white dahlias. And so really all this is is just going to be a painting job and sticking some flowers into the vases. And so I started by mixing some white in with my celery chalk paint to give it a lighter shade. And so at the very bottom portion of the vase, I'm just going to make a ring all the way around the bottom. And 
it's not gonna be a perfectly straight line because I'm doing it by hand. You could use painter's tape to tape it off and make it straighter, but the problem is is that it's curved and so it's kind of hard and time consuming to make that mask all the way around. So I just did it by hand and this is after all a handmade project. So I kind of like the squigglies, but if it does get out of control, all you have to do is while it's wet, just take your finger and wipe it off and get it back to a semi smooth edge so that it's kind of straight. And then instead of using the white chalk paint, I decided to go ahead and use my white paint pen. And I made another ring around that that was a little bit thinner. And then at the top part, I'm going to take my ballet slipper, add a little bit of white to that to make it a few shades lighter. But I also want this to be kind of blended and not just solid. So I'm just gonna do a few coats on that all the way to the top and then once it dries I'm gonna take my black paint pen and make little seeds and so we're making this look like watermelon and I got the inspiration from some cups that I had seen at Dollar Tree but I didn't want my watermelons to be quite as bright as the ones on the cups but even though they're super cute and you may want to keep them nice and bright like they are but I decided to go with the more pastel colors. So once the black paint of my seeds was all nice and dry, then I went back in with my white paint pen and then just made little highlights at the bottom of the seed where it curves. And then I'm going to take my dahlias and just fold the bottom so that they fit in there and I get it to the right height that I want and it was done. So here's how they turned out and I love these. They're so cute, especially in person. I always say that. I think everything looks so much prettier in person, but these are pretty cute on the screen too. And these dahlias I think are so pretty. Dollar Tree florals are kind of getting a little bit better and better every year I feel. And usually I will get rid of the leaves of their florals because the leaves usually are too lime green and look way too fake. But I think in this case it gives it just enough of the greenery and looks really cute and so sweet. So I hope you guys like this. For our next project, we're gonna be using this straw hat, which is about 14 and a half inches wide, and then some pink flowers and some white hydrangeas. I don't know what the pink flowers are called. And then some buffalo check wire edged ribbon from Hobby Lobby, and you get this half price for $5 at Christmas time. And then we're going back with our same Waverly chalk paints in white, celery, and ballet slipper, and then our hot glue gun, scissors, wire cutters, and a chenille stem for our bow. And so for this project, we're basically doing the same thing we did on our vases, but we're gonna be painting the straw. So I first removed the ribbon that came with the hat, and I was really surprised to find a hat of this size and quality. It really is pretty cute, and you could actually wear this too. Probably not after I embellish it, but well, maybe you could, like to the Kentucky Derby or something. I don't know, but anyway, so it was really easy to paint this because I had the lines of the rim to guide me and so I just did two rows in the green and then one in the white and then the rest including the top part I painted in the pink and then after it dries I'm going to go back in with my black paint pen and paint little seeds again just on the rim portion and not on the top hat part and then I'm also going to take some of that celery green chalk paint and add some white to it to make it a couple shades lighter and put some stripes or just dots I don't know what you would even call it it wasn't 
a perfect straight line, but just to give it kind of a striped look like a watermelon. So now I'm going to use my buffalo check ribbon to make a bow and I'm doing the fold over method and so in this clip I'm actually making six loops on each side but that's for a different DIY that'll be in my next video and I got the clips mixed up so for the hat I only did three loops on each side and then I'm going to fold it in half and then put little slits through the wire and then I'm going to feed my chenille stem through those little slits and then twist it in the back so that my loops can be moved around and you can make a super sweet cute bow and then I'm going to dovetail the edges and then I'm going to take a lighter and lightly singe them so that my ribbon doesn't get frayed so even though there's six loops on this bow you're going to use the same method and just pull them left to right and get it all fanned out and cute and then I poked a couple of holes into the rim of my straw hat using this ginormous nail, but you could use anything, even one side of the blade of your scissors, and then feed your chenille stem of your bow into that and then tie it off in the back by twisting it and then cut off the excess. And so you may have noticed that my nails are completely gone now and they're all short, but they're recovering and I cannot wait for Mindy to get back to work so that I can go get my nails done because it's so hard to work without nails because when you've had them for so long, it's completely different when they're gone. And so now I'm going to add my flowers to either side of my bow and I just took my wire cutters and cut them down and then I'm going to put the pink ones on the bottom and then add my white hydrangeas to the top to kind of knock down the brightness of those pink ones. And again I'm leaving the leaves on these as well so that when I put my hot glue on there it has more to grab onto and stays in place. And here it is all done and again I think it's so sweet and so cute I love pink and green together no matter what it is but in this case I think this would be a super adorable door wreath and because I have double doors I would have to make two and so I just love how this turned out and it's super cute with the vases and I'll show that towards the end after our last project but I love it and I hope you guys like it too For our final project, I'm going to be using this tray that I got from my sister-in-law and it's seen better days, but we're going to make it over and try to make it into a summertime project. And then I'll be using my Krylon chalky finish paint, that piece of netting from our first DIY and some shells, a little bit of sandpaper to sand our tray. And then I'll be using the Silhouette Cameo 3 and my black vinyl, some transfer tape from Dollar Tree, and my 24 inch cutting mat. And my vinyl is from Frisco Craft and I absolutely love them. And then my hot glue gun and my scissors. And so the first thing I did was just sanded down my tray just to get some of the shiny off. And I like that it has the darker edges and so I'm going to not put a completely solid coverage on this so that some of that black will be peeking through. On the bottom though I am going to cover all of that so that you can't see any of that design that's on there. This was a really pretty tray but it has seen better days.
so then I'm going to measure the bottom part and I'm going to use a decal to put on there. So I'm using my 24 inch cutting mat and my black vinyl and I will put the link to Frisco Crafts in my description box below as well as my Amazon store where you can go straight to that and get any of the crafting items you see me using. So I just made my design and then I'm going to cut that out and weed it and put that onto my tray. So when I think of summertime, I always think of the beach. And when I think of the beach, I think of fish. And so I thought Matthew 419 would be the perfect scripture for this project. And that's where Jesus says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And so even though this is kind of a beachy summertime theme, this could be left up all year round, especially if your home decor is the farmhouse coastal look. So I'm using my utility knife to make some lines in the vinyl just on the top layer and not going through the backing paper. And that makes it a lot easier and more manageable when you're pulling your vinyl off. And so once I get all of the vinyl off, then I'm going to go back in and weed out the insides of the letters. And I'll have this decal available in my Etsy shop, which is White Sparrow Living. And I'll put that link in the description box as well. And I downloaded these fonts from defont.com. So for the Follow Me and Fishers, I used Bargain Demo. And then for And I Will Make You and Of Men, I used Gabriola. And then for Matthew 419, I used Ariel. But I'll have those listed down below. And I get tons of questions asking me the difference between the Cricut and the Silhouette. And I just started using the Silhouette in September when I started my channel. And I have only used the first generation Cricut that comes with the cartridges. So I'm not real familiar with the newer versions. But in a couple of weeks, I will be using the Cricut Explore Air 2. And so the sweet people at Cricut sent me a new one as well as a heat transfer iron so that we can do some iron on vinyl. So I'm really excited to unpack that and get to use it and give you guys the down low on the pros and cons of each of these machines. So if you're in the market for either one, and I know a lot of people have been looking for them or wanting to purchase, and it is a big purchase, so you want to do as much research as possible. So hopefully I can help you out with that. And speaking of Cricut, most of you know I'm doing the giveaway of the first generation Cricut cutting machine on June 1st. And so in order to enter, all you have to do is be subscribed and then comment on a certain video. And I'll link that video, not this video, but another video. And it's the one that has a home sign with the windmill as the O but I'll put that video down below in the description box and then just make sure you comment on that particular video so that I can do that random draw thing with my app that just picks a comment and whoever's name comes up, that's the winner. So make sure you comment on that video. So since I'm doing all of my business during this transfer process, I thought I would show you guys my baby grandson that was born last Tuesday. So here he is and oh my gosh, still getting lots of questions about how they're doing. And so I just wanted to update you guys. And a lot of you have been missing Michael J as well since he's gone back to work. So here's Pop Pop with his grandson. And so oh, they're both so adorable. And then here's Connor with his big brother and sister, Cadence and Carson. And so my heart is just full. So anyway, I got my decal on and I'm just using my squeegee that comes with the silhouette and putting those letters down. And if any of the letters come up when you're pulling the transfer tape off, just push it back down and give it a rub and it'll come off. I always pull the transfer tape in a diagonal zigzag motion, but you really want to go pretty slowly so that if something does come up, you don't rip the vinyl. 
And so when I send out my decals, I will put the transfer tape on my clothes and on the countertop so that it's less sticky and transfers easier. So that means that you will probably see some lint and maybe a little bit of Lola hair on there. So that's what that is. So when I designed my decal, I made a space open so that I could put a little fish in there. And I'm just taking some of these twigs and I'm gonna fold them over and make it into a fish. And then I'll use some wire to keep that together. And then I'm gonna take some of the netting that I had left over from our first project, and I'm gonna kind of drape that starting from the back and using my hot glue, and then pull that around the edge and embellish the tray. And I'll add some shells and even a starfish that I have no idea where I got it, but I'll just use my hot glue and get everything attached. And when I'm putting my shells down, the shells won't grab the wood because they're not flat. So I'm gluing them to the netting and then I'm gluing the netting to the board. And so that's how that's gonna stay in place. And here it is all finished and I'm absolutely in love with this. And I love, love, love the white with the nautical theme and the black vinyl. I just think it's so crisp and fresh looking and very summery. But like I said, you could have this out all year round, but it's the perfect backdrop to put some additional colors into your decor. So I'll show you what it looks like with the watermelon goodies and the little fishies that are coming out of the planter. So don't forget to go check out Kat's channel and I'll have her video and channel linked in the description box below. And so I just love this and I hope you guys like it too. enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up comment let me know what you think tell me which one was your favorite i hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light bye